When will graphene be used in mainstream solar panels? OK, we've heard a lot about graphene and its miraculous properties. It has more electron mobility than any other conductor. It is flexible. It has 200 times more strength than steel. It is the material that will lead us into the future. So, the questions that we will explore in the video are Why graphene so far has not permeated into everyday products? And what is the recent breakthrough that is set to radically step up the graphene production? On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering and sustainability. Please subscribe to get all our updates, posts and videos. The one word answer as to why graphene is not being used as widely is cost. Currently, it is more expensive than gold by weight. This does not mean that there is no existing market for graphene. The global graphene market size was estimated at 42.8 million US dollars in 2017 and is projected to witness a compound annual growth rate of 38% from 2017 to 2025. Currently, graphene is being used in some specialised sensing products and some premium household products. These include special shoes, fishing rods, bicycle helmets and bicycle frames, etc. However, for graphene to become as ubiquitous as plastics, the price has to come down by at least three orders of magnitude. Small graphene flakes and nanoplatelets are sold by weight and quality, whereas graphene sheets are sold by size. The price rises exponentially with the increase in sheet size. For example, a 1x1 one one inch sample of graphene costs $180, where a 4x4 four four inch sample of the same quality costs $900. The reason is that the greater the size, the more difficult it is to produce graphene without flaws. A sample with lower defects sells for a much higher price. For example, a 10 by 10 millimeter layer of high quality graphene is being sold at the price of $380. Now that we have some idea of price, we can estimate how much it would cost when a graphene layer is applied across a solar panel. We have already covered how the use of graphene improves the efficiency of a solar panel in a separate video. You can check this out on the link above. Now let's imagine we chose a 340 watt panel that cost $280. The area of that panel is 77.2 by 39.1 inches. This means to cover that panel with a patched layer of low quality graphene would cost a whopping $175,000. Even though the layer of graphene would increase the efficiency by 3%. But imagine, instead of that extra efficiency, you can install solar panels on more than a dozen houses. Therefore, the use of graphene in solar panels doesn't make economic sense at present. The graphene products so far in the market have been ones that take advantage of its structural strength properties. These products can utilise small sized and low quality graphene flakes, which are also comparatively low priced. For example, adding graphene in rubber makes it much more durable and wear resistant. This is being utilised in premium shoe soles. Similarly, research has shown that graphene reinforced concrete is more than twice as strong compared to normal concrete. This would bring a reduction in the overall use of concrete in structures if graphene prices came down. As far as making use of graphene's remarkable electrical properties is concerned, the products have been limited to just small sensors. There are several methods for producing graphene. They can be classed as top-down and bottom-up. In the top-down approach, we take a block of graphite and we either exfoliate layers from it or shear the block into thin layers. In the bottom-up approach, the layer of graphene at an atomistic scale by depositing carbon compounds over a heated substrate. This results in carbon molecules reconfiguring themselves forming graphene. An example of this is the chemical vapour deposition or the CVD process. The production from these results in graphene of different sizes and of different quality. On the screen you are looking at are some of the defects of graphene. Some manufacturing methods are prone to certain types of defects. For example, exfoliation is likely to produce flaked graphene, whereas CVD is likely to produce a perforated graphene. So far, exfoliation method produces graphene with the lowest number of defects and the highest electron mobility, and most bulk graphene is produced this way. It has to be mentioned though, that all these methods are extremely low yield. Things however are about to change. More recently, scientists at Rice University have come up with a simplified, low-cost, high-yield method called flash graphene. 
This process is simple. A flash of a high current, 200 volts, is passed through any solid carbon rich substance. The dual heating takes the temperature to almost 3000 degrees centigrade. This energy breaks up the existing carbon bonds with other elements in the source material which gas out and carbon is retained. The carbon then bonds with other carbon atoms to form graphene. The process is fairly efficient and uses only 7.2 kilojoules per gram of graphene produced. Interestingly, the procedure uses no solvent or chemical additives. This method can be used to produce graphene from even food waste, but the higher the richness of carbon in the source material, the higher the quality and yield of graphene. Furthermore, the type of graphene produced by this method is turbostratic graphene, which is more desirable. Turbostratic graphene can be easily separated into a single layer. Flash graphene can catapult the graphene annual production from grams to kilogram scale. More details of this can be found in the article Grand Scale Bottom-Up Flash Graphene Synthesis that was published in the journal Nature in January 2020. Flash graphene is a breakthrough technology that if its commercialization is realized, we are looking at a graphene future sooner than anticipated. We will be providing you with more information on the flash graphene as soon as the technology develops. And with this, the video is concluded. Please hit the like button if you have learned something from the video. Do give it a thumbs up and thank you for your attention.